Hello friends, it's Sandy Alnock and today I have the new, brand new release from Colorado Craft with Anita Jerom images and a whole bunch of tips to spice up your scene layouts on your cards. So I'm going to talk you through the process that I went through as I was looking at the stamps and deciding what to do with them. Let's get started. The first stamp set is called Winter Wonderland, and it has a scene that you can stamp all as one, but it also has just the bunny and whatever this little character is. I don't know what, what species he is necessarily, but I decided I wanted to turn him into something else, which is what caused me to come up with my first tip, which is to stamp in a light colored ink. If you stamp in something that you can alter, then you can change elements of it much more easily than if you have a black line. So I stamped all of the images for this video in a craft colored ink. And it doesn't matter which craft colored ink as long as it works with the medium that you have. And this one in particular, I wanted to change this from a rabbit and a whatever the critter it is to, to a rabbit and a penguin. And that's where I went with this. I also decided to keep the scene really soft, almost like a foggy winter scene. So the card is this one. And you can see here, whatever animal that was before, whatever, whatever that was, I changed it into a penguin. And all I did was leave white around the two eyes, give them a little beak and put black above that. And just coloring the paw, and a little bit down the side and this paw, that's enough to convey that it's a penguin. So you can turn almost any animal into a penguin very easily if you stamp it in light ink. This stamp is not in this set, but it's in one that I'll show you in just a minute. The background for it, I decided to keep it really soft because as I was coloring these in, I wanted the focus to be zoomed in on them. If I had put a big old background behind it, it would have been hard unless I made it really dark to create something where these two were the star. This little guy also needed to be way up in the front because if he was on the same plane, if he was the same distance, right, standing right here beside the rabbit, he would be a ginormous mouse. So I wanted him to look like he was forward a little, so he's a little bigger. And that's why I stamped him closer to the viewer. And once I had made this really soft forest in the background, it just fades off, it's just super soft. I added a tree back here, just a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. So it needed a little something to balance it. And I also added snow underneath. There's footprints for the mouse, footprints for the rabbit and the penguin, and then just a little bit of a hillside in here, just to give them a path so that there's a place they're walking to. They're going to a party. And this, I'm not sure in the stamp set if that looks like an, maybe an envelope, not really positive, but I decided to make it a gift. So all I had to do was color it in and put a bow on top. Really easy to do that. This stamp set is called But First Presents and it has this little mouse. This is the one that I added in here. And if you wanna see if your stamp, like this stamp looks like the right size for whatever you're gonna pair it with, just hold the stamps next to each other and gauge whether or not one looks like it's out of characteristically too big for the other and just separate them in the layout. Okay, onto this card. Now I wanted to do something here where this guy was gonna be closer to the packages. So the cat needed to be nudged over. I want, because I didn't want this guy to be tossing the package on there. Now these are two separate stamps, so I was able to move it really easily. But then I was, thinking originally about maybe adding more packages, a whole bunch more and making it go all the way down the card and then putting a chair or something underneath of this guy. So I stamped the two of them really close to each other in the same crafting. And let me show you how that worked. What I was thinking was if I moved them up, then that changes their perspective. If they were on a chair, they would be higher up than if they were just sitting on the floor. I could of course move the floor up if I wanted the floor here. But as I started thinking about them having a different perspective, I also 
thought, what if they were outside? What would they be on if they were outside? They might be on a big hillside of some kind. Now, this is a very tall hillside. They would have quite the, the challenge to hike up this thing to pile these gifts up. But what, whatever, you know, it's a story. So this was needed in order to make that look like a hillside. I needed something where I could draw the negative, the, do the negative drawing for the top part of this. And I also tilted the feet so they go down that hillside a little bit. And to make it really feel like it was way high up, I put the clouds out there, but I also put trees here so that you're really getting the idea this is way high up in the air. And it completely changes the perspective of what's going on in the stamp set. So that was a really fun one. This one's called Sled Bunny. And it's got the sled and the bunny attached to each other. You could detach them and make them any distance apart that you want. But there's also a little mouse who's walking this direction. So the two of them can be looking at each other. And I did lay them down next to each other on sticky notes to see how far this guy needed to be for the bunny to be looking at him. Because if you put him right here, his head is not really looking down. So I had to put him out a little bit. What I was originally thinking for this was to just do some coloring on these guys and put a little bit of snow at the bottom and not much else, just to leave the focus more on them. All right, so the card, I did the coloring on these three first. And as I said, I had to put him out here so I could see where the bunny's head looked like it would be looking toward. And I wanted to have something very long and horizontal so that it was just a big nondescript sky back there. All I had originally was just a sky. And it was nice because it gave a soft balance to the strength of the coloring in these guys. But it also needed a little bit of weight of some kind. It was just too plain. And if I were to put trees across the whole thing, then they would start fighting with these guys for attention. So I decided to leave the trees over here. And I did put one tree in the midground. So this is the foreground, the midground, and the background. I put one Charlie Brown Christmas tree in the midground, and then the background back here, I used an eraser to pull the whites out because this blue sky was so soft that I was able to, to move those away. You could also use a white pencil to add some mountains in there that are just barely, barely in the distance, really soft that way. And make sure that you add a little trail where the bunny is trudging along in the snow because that's going to really help to make it look like He's walking in the snow and I used some white. I used some of this Presto white. I've talked about it a little bit before. This is basically the same thing as if, if you took typing class back in the day, this is that white out that we used to use. It smells just like it, but it's a pen style. It's just really hard to squeeze. So if you have arthritis, don't get that. But I did add a little bit above the tops of these to make the the sled look like it's sitting down in the snow. So if you have some images in the foreground, just make sure you keep strong background elements away from them unless they're strong enough and solid enough to pull these to the foreground. This stamp set is called Candy Cane Mice. This is all one stamp. And I was trying to figure out what story was being told here. And I wanted to make something different, something unique. And what I thought about was another stamp set that I came out last year or the year before. And it has another little mouse who's hanging or taking down a stocking. So for this guy, I put the image here at the bottom so that they could be in the foreground. And this little mouse is back here. And I gave him a little tree. Another, I was into Charlie Brown, Brown trees. I, I made him hanging his stocking or taking his stocking down from the tree and had a little saggy star on top, but I created a path going between the two of them. It's real easy to make a scene back here and a scene up here, but not have them be connected. But I made what looks like a very messy trail that they were taking their stockings and dragging them through the snow, and you can see footprints all over the place. It makes kind of a mess. And that's where they ended up just dropping everything. Now, this stamp set is probably meant to be inside. They probably stole some kid's stocking. But here I decided to make it outside by creating this story that there's an, a tree over there where all their stockings were hung. 
and then just some barely there kind of background. So you can give yourself more perspective by, by joining the elements of the scene and giving, their, giving some kind of a path for the figures in the scene to follow. This stamp set's called Dear Santa, and it's one of those that, again, has all the images together. So there's a dog, a rabbit, and a mouse. They're all putting their mail in the box, but the post box is here. This little guy is separate here. This one is turned this way. And, you know, like he, he would be standing up in order to put the mail in the box. And here's the rabbit. However, what I saw, as soon as I saw this laying down, I saw him looking this way. And what, what could I do with a stamp that's facing this way instead of facing this way? So I created something else entirely by making the dog lean out of a window. <laughs> I mean, what fun is that? All I had to do was mask out that portion of the dog. I also masked out this thing at the bottom because he's holding more mail. So I just drew a paw in here on the window. I made perspective for this window. If you wanted to make one, I imagined a vanishing point over here. So the bottom of the building goes here. The top of the building goes here. They all point toward that vanishing point. The window points there, the top and the bottom of it. And everything else here is vertical. So pick your vanishing point if it's over here. And all of those things go that direction. Now, where did this little mouse come from? This little mouse came from another mini stamp set with this little sweet mouse in it. So I thought the two of them exchanging cards and gifts would be good. and decided to combine those. And again, I gave a trail to this stamp and I gave a shadow to this one. Now, when I was trying to figure out where the shadow would be, I went down, you know, the dog's body is going to be sticking out between these two boards. So I made the shadow come out between those two boards. That works if it's noon, if the sun is coming from directly above, because that's where the shadow is going to be coming straight down. Now I did decide to use this for one more card because I wanted to use the post box. I really wanted to use that. And I also wanted to figure out if you were a rabbit and you didn't have a friend who could help you get your mail into the mailbox. Yes, I do tell myself stories like this. If you were a rabbit, what would you do? How would you get your mail into the box if you were alone? And what I did was mask out this line on that stamp and I masked out the bottom so that I could create a snowdrift that the rabbit could walk up and be able to fit the mail into the slot. I mean, I thought that was kind of a cool solution for a rabbit to wait for the snow to pile up that much. So now the rabbit can get his mail to Santa Claus all by himself. Isn't that cute? All of these cards were so much fun to make. And if you let yourself think outside the box, it's really amazing the kinds of work that you can create. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you again next week. With another video. Take care and have an awesome weekend. Go create something every day. <laughs>